Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about properties of parallel lines. As you can see, we have a beautiful picture of New York City. Why do we have a picture of New York City here if we want to learn about properties of parallel lines? Well, because it turns out that New York City is such a wonderful city that contains lots and lots of geometric shapes. Some of them are even hidden. For example, can you see any parallel lines in the city? Well, some of them are hidden. So let's look for them. So let's quickly travel to Times Square by 42nd Street. So here's an image from out of space of our planet Earth portrayed by Google Earth. So let's travel to Times Square. Okay, so here we have Times Square. Now, if we zoom out a little bit and tilt our view, uh, we might notice some of the lines here on the streets, right? So let's see here. Let's zoom out a little bit and tilt it. Now, what do you notice here? Do we see any geometric shapes in terms of lines? or are there other shapes? So we can see many of these parallel lines which are represented by the streets or the roads, right? And then we have other lines that are parallel that are represented by the avenues. So how can we integrate this concept in our geometry lessons for today? Well, let's see. So if you look at this figure here that represents the map of Times Square, we can actually draw lots and lots of parallel lines. So here we have all these lines here that are all parallel. And then we have another line here, which is called the transversal. And in today's lesson, we will be looking at all the properties of parallel lines that are being cut by transversal. Now, if you look at these lines here that are parallel, are there any angles that are congruent or equal in measure? To simplify, let me remove one of the parallel lines so we only have two lines that are parallel here. So let's say you have the following, just the two lines. And as a side note, to show that they're parallel, you use a specific geometric symbol. And the symbol is simply arrows, as you can see in the diagram here. So which of the angles should be congruent here? Well, if you, for example, take this angle here and this angle, they're vertical angles and they're congruent. Or if you take this angle here, so let's name them. That's angle one and two. Let's call this angle three. So we also know that angle two and three are congruent. And angle four is congruent. Therefore, angle two and four must be congruent. So here we have an idea on which angles are congruent and which other angles are supplementary. But let's first establish the names and then will come up with the properties and the theorems that justify these properties. So let's say you have two lines here that are cut by a transversal. So let's call the lines M, N, and transversal T as shown in the figure. How many angles are being created here? Well, as you can see, we have eight different angles as shown in the figure here. So the question is, how do you name these angles? Well, there are specific names. For example, we have vertical angles that are angle one and angle four. And so is angle two and three, angle five and eight, and angle six and seven. And obviously all these angles are congruent or equal in measure. And notice that here in this case, we cannot say that angle one and five are congruent because the lines are not parallel, okay? That's why I'm using a different color. Then we have something called same side interior angles. And these are all the angles that lie in the inside here. For example, if you look at angle three and angle five, right? They lie in the same side. And so is angle four and angle six. Then we have same side exterior angles that actually lie on the same side or are on the exterior side. For example, angle one and angle seven. And also we have angle two and angle eight. These are all in the same side, but on the exterior sides of the lines. 
Then we have alternate interior angle. So these are the angles that lie in the interior of the lines, but are actually alternating. For example, angle three and angle six, those are alternate interior angles. And so are angles four and five. Then we have alternate exterior angles. For example, in this case, we have angle one and angle eight. These are alternate exterior angles. And angle two and seven are also alternate exterior angles. Well, what's the relationship between angle one and five in this case? Well, there's also a name for those. And these are called corresponding angles. So how many pairs of corresponding angles do we have in general here? Well, we also have angles three and seven that are corresponding, then angles two and six, and also angles four and eight. Okay, so now that we have covered all the names of these angles, let's look at the properties of when line M and N become parallel. Let's see if any of these angles become congruent or supplementary, and then we'll discuss how we can use it to solve algebraic problems or complete a proof. So let's say we're given that line M is parallel to line N. And again, just to reiterate, you can show that two figures are parallel by drawing arrows here like this. So the question is, what is the relationship between the angles shown in the figure? And now we can use the names that we have previously learned. So for example, if we look at angle three and angle six, what can we say about these two angles? Well, it turns out that these two angles are congruent. Since angle three and angle six are alternate interior angle and they're congruent, we can formulate the following theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Notice that, that the parallel lines here again are M and N, and the transversal is line T as shown in the figure. So basically we can say that angle three and angle six are congruent and also angle four and angle five as shown in the figure. Now let's look at angle three and angle two. What can we say about those two angles? Well, we know that those two angles must be congruent because they're vertical angles. And we know that all vertical angles are congruent. Now, if we erase angle three really quick and just focus on angle two and six, then what can we say about that? Well, because of the transitive property, we know that angle two and six also must be congruent. But now, now they're called corresponding angles. So the second part of the theorem states that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. So we have angle two congruent to angle six. Do we have any other pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent? The answer is yes. We have angle four congruent to angle eight. Then we have angle three congruent to angle seven. And we also have angle one congruent to angle five. So if we look at angle one and angle three, what's the relationship between these two angles? So it turns out that angle one and angle three form a linear pair. And we know that in this case, we know that angle one and three are supplementary. However, we also know that angle one and angle five are congruent. So what does that mean? We can say that angle five and angle three are also supplementary. Now, if we look at the relationship between angle three and five, those are also same side interior angles. So there's a theorem that we can develop here that is always going to be true. So the theorem states that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. So again, we have angle five and angle three that are supplementary, but also angle four and angle six. Now let's look at angles one, four, five, and six. So here we know that angle four and angle five are congruent because we established this before that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. However, we also know that angle one and four are congruent because they're vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent, and also that angle five and eight are also congruent because they're vertical angles. 
So if we erase uh, the marks here for angle 4 and 5, uh, we're actually left with angle 1 and 8. And what's the relationship between those two angles? Well, it turns out that they're also congruent and they're called alternate exterior angles. So here we have angle 1 and 8 are congruent. So how many other pairs do we have that are congruent, that are alternate exterior? We also have angle 2 and angle 7 as shown in the diagram here. So here's a summary of all the four theorems that we have developed so far pertaining to parallel lines. Again, these theorems can be used to solve algebraic problems and it can be used in proofs when doing statement reason tables. So let's look at one more theorem that is going to help us with today's lesson pertaining to parallel lines but in which the transversal is now perpendicular. So let's say that in this image we have two parallel lines and we have a transversal that is perpendicular to only one of the parallel lines. Then what can we say here? What's the relationship between line T and line N? Well, it turns out that it also has to be perpendicular to line N. And it can be easily argued because here we have corresponding angles, right? For example, if you look at this angle and this angle, well, we know that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent, right? So if this top angle here is a right angle, then this also must be a right angle. So the theorem goes as follows. If a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other one also. So let's look at an example now. Here we have a diagram with two parallel lines L and M, but now we don't have a transversal, but we have two lines that intersect at some point B, and these two lines are perpendicular, shown in the diagram. We also know that uh, this angle over here is 130 degrees. We also know that this angle is X. So how do we find the value of X here? So obviously we cannot uh, directly use one of the theorems that we have just learned. So we have to do something to this. So what we can do here is construct another parallel line. So let's say we're constructing another line N such that it's parallel to line L and M respectively. What we can do now is use the theorems twice, okay? So for example, if we look at this angle over here, then what is the relationship of this angle that I just drew with 130 degrees? Well, in this case, we know that 130 plus this angle, let's call it angle lowercase a, so let's write this down, that 130 degrees plus angle a must equal to 180 degrees. And what's the reason for that? Well, the reason is simply if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, in this case, line N and L I cut by segment AB, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So all we need to do is solve for angle A by subtracting 130 degrees on both sides, and we obtain a 50 degree angle. Now, how do we continue this? How do we find the value of X? Well, let me use a different color. Now, let's call this angle over here, angle B, okay? Uh, what can we say about the relationship between angle A and angle B? Well, here, we know that angle A plus angle B are equal to 90 degrees because uh, segment AB is perpendicular to segment BC as shown in the figure. We know what the angle A is, 50 degrees. We don't know what B is. However, we know that they both add up to 90. So therefore, angle B is equal to 40 degrees. Okay, so how do we find angle X? Well, it turns out that these two angles here are the same, right? So here, according to this figure, according to the diagram, angle X is equal to angle B. And why is that? That's because of the theorem that we develop pertaining to alternate interior angles. That if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Well, we know that angle B is equal to 40. 
So that means by substitution or transitive property, we found the value of x to be equal to 40 degrees. And that is the answer. So that's basically it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.